you know, I'm the one person that is showing whether he's really uh, going to do complete full free speech on Twitter. You know, I'm like um, the canary in the coal mine, as they call it, I've heard. You just heard from 20-year-old Jack Sweeney, who runs the Twitter account that tracks the activity of Elon Musk's private jet. Now, here's what Elon Musk said about that account on November 6th. Quote, my commitment to free speech extends even to not banning the account following my plane, even though that is a direct personal safety risk. Fast forward to today, and that account, you guessed it, has now been banned. Now, prior to just outright banning that account, Elon Jet was shadow banned. Jack Sweeney explained this in a December 10th thread, which reads, My Twitter files on the shadow banning and filtering of Elon Jet. Internal messages obtained by an anonymous Twitter employee explained to me that on December 2nd, your account, Elon Jet, was visibly limited and restricted to a severe degree internally. He then shared a screenshot from Twitter's VP of Trust and Safety requesting heavy visibility filtering for the account. Now, at the time that I record this video, Jack Sweeney's account is also, you guessed it, now banned. So much for freedom of speech, right? Now, the Elon Jet account was not the only account that was shadow banned. I checked because you can actually check to see the status of your account. And there are a number of other accounts, predominantly on the left, that are indeed shadow banned. This includes the Surfs, which was ghost banned, along with the National Rational, David Pakman, Good Politic Guy, and even myself until that is, it was reversed this morning for some reason. So this was never about freedom of speech for Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a socially awkward, lonely simpleton who knows that you can actually get the applause that you've been searching for but never had your entire life by pandering to the far right. He tweets out dumb shit, they clap like seals, and he gets a dopamine rush. It's really that simple. And the best part about this for Elon Musk is that he doesn't even have to be likable or creative. He just says buzzwords that he knows they'll like and he gets the attention that he's been craving now for decades. For example, he tweeted out, my pronouns are prosecute and Fauci and received 1.2 million likes. Now, after he was viciously booed at Chappelle's show in San Francisco, he coped by tweeting, the woke mind virus is either defeated or nothing else matters. And he received over 650,000 likes for that. But as Joshua Hill put it, hate to break it to you, but when the richest people on earth tell you the real problems are pronouns and wokeness, they are trying to distract you from something. And Joshua is exactly correct about that. The only people in the entire world stupid enough to not see through Elon Musk are members of the right-wing tribe that chose to adopt him as one of their own. But he doesn't even really care about their dumbass culture war. He's just pandering to them. He told them all to vote Republican, and then he didn't even vote himself in this last election, which is good, by the way. But it just goes to show you that he's doing what he's doing for a applause for attention because he doesn't give a shit about their culture war issues. He only cares about maximizing profits. So he chose Republicans as his tribe in part because of that, but also because no one else is as gullible and unintelligent as these reactionary imbeciles. But normal people see through him because he is obviously a terrible person who isn't just a greedy oligarch, but he's a union buster. He exploits and abuses his own workers. But do you want to know who's willing to look past that? Well, QAnon. So after he tweeted a QAnon dog whistle, which was follow the rabbit, which is a reference to a QAnon rallying cry, the QAnon community immediately began celebrating again and again and again. In other words, the group who believes that there's this elitist cabal of pedophiles drinking the blood of children is ecstatic to learn that this guy pictured here with Ghislaine Maxwell may be one of them. You can't make this shit up. So he knows which buttons to press to make the dum-dums applaud but he knows that normal people will never fall for his bullshit because again, he is a terrible person. All 20 custodial workers at Twitter's San Francisco headquarters and 30 others that were furloughed without pay were laid off just three weeks before Christmas after the company's custodial contractor refused to rehire all of them. And the workers say it's because they're in a union and Elon Musk has a history of not liking unions. And they were fired the same day they began to strike and many of them were immigrants from El Salvador or Yemen 
and they relied on this job, but Elon Musk took that away from them. And additionally, as In These Times explains, in mid-November, Musk instated an extremely hardcore work culture at Twitter, demanding 80-hour work weeks and prompting a wave of resignations. Janitors say that afterward, some conference rooms in Twitter's headquarters were converted into makeshift bedrooms and nurseries with mattresses, blankets, pillows, and bedside tables. But that's not all, because in order to cut costs, leaders at Twitter have even discussed not paying severance to the thousands of employees that the company has laid off. And as The New York Times explains, and Mr. Musk has threatened employees with lawsuits if they talk to the media and act in a manner contrary to the company's interest, according to an internal email sent last Friday. But if all of that wasn't bad enough, Elon Musk seemingly retaliated against Twitter's former head of trust and safety, Yoel Roth, after he penned an op-ed in The New York Times criticizing Musk's managing style. Now, Elon Musk seemingly retaliated by insinuating that Yoel Roth was a pedophile based on an out-of-context excerpt from his 2016 doctoral dissertation, which led to Yoel Roth getting death threats and even having to flee his home after Musk's posts were amplified by libs of TikTok. And I should remind you that this isn't the first time that Musk has baselessly accused someone of being a pedophile. And I can't stress this enough, this is the guy pictured here with Ghislaine Maxwell, who wants you to think that other people are guilty of pedophilia. So Elon Musk is a piece of shit, and he has to live with the fact that most people see him for what he is. He's a petty, narcissistic, uncharismatic loser who, even though he has more money than most human beings ever, he still can't buy the one thing that he desires the most, and that is appreciation, attention. But he can try to milk the far right for a little bit of love and attention so long as he plays their greatest hits and speaks buzzwords to them. Because, again, this is the only sector of our entire society that is dumb enough to fall for an oligarch who doesn't care about them. He just wants them to give him attention, to make him feel special and appreciated. So going back to the beginning of this video with Jack Sweeney getting banned and the Elon Jet account being banned. This was never about freedom of speech for Elon Musk. This was about Elon Musk trying to find ways to earn credibility among the far right, which is the only group of people in the United States who would accept his stupid ass. And that is incredibly pathetic and sad, but it's very much on brand for Elon Musk. Were you acting like a...